Well, hello everyone and welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV travel, RV living, and RV lifestyles. So grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, relax, and let's talk about RVs. Hello and welcome back to the show. This is RV Talk Radio. I'm Rob. This is episode 49. And today we're going to talk about when an RV is more than just an RV. And uh, we have a great interview for you coming up. Uh, There's a couple here that uh, they're uh, traveling nurses. And it was fascinating to uh, interview them. Uh, I've talked about their RV a little bit in past shows, and uh, I'll have them on in a little bit. It's about a half-hour interview. You will enjoy them. Hang tight. we got some other things to talk about. Here we go. This week, we released a video kind of giving you a hint or uh, showing you a little bit about what's going on with Sherry and I. We're getting ready to uh, take sailing lessons, and what we're using it for is get a chance to see whether we even like sailing. Uh, but the most inter- interesting part about all this is when we do this sailing over in uh, Lake Pleasant in Arizona, it's going to be record high temperatures here. So I think on Saturday, which is our class time, it's going to be like around 115. The day that we're going out sailing is going to be 120 uh, record highs here. So I'm really hoping, besides trying not to get burned up, we bought some good sunblock and things like that, that hopefully being on the water is going to be a bit cooler uh, because that's just hot. So uh, anyway, that's probably the most interesting thing about the whole thing going on. But it's what this is, is kind of evaluation for Sherry and I to kind of get a chance to see if we like sailing. And uh, if we decide we do, then... We might look at some future plans in that. Uh, if not, then we'll look at some future plans going a different route. Uh, we're from the Northwest, so there's plenty to do if um, if, we, if that's not the alternative we wanted to go. Anyway, we're checking it out. RVing is always in the picture. It's, uh, uh, anyway, it's going to be interesting. So hang tight for reports on that next week. But this week, I kind of want to emphasize about when an RV is more than just an RV. And the reason I want to say that is it's so easy to get caught up in my world as far as people have got channels and Facebook and blogs that they're trying to grow and all that stuff. And it was so refreshing to do our interview this week that they didn't have other intentions. Like typically when we do an interview or something like that, they're expecting us to promote it and put their links out and make a big deal about those people and then often we're disappointed because we don't get anything in return and it's like really anyway so this week we interviewed a couple that first of all don't, don't they don't have a blog and they don't have a facebook and if they do it's just for family stuff they're not doing videos they have no other intentions other than to tell you why they have an rv and why they use it it was so refreshing. In fact, I almost didn't know what questions to ask because was, um, usually when I'm interviewing a channel, they're just trying to push you know, their, their stuff. So these were traveling nurses. And if you haven't heard what they are, is they're kind of contract nurses that go from region to region. And then they have kind of like a recruiter that kind of is their agent and so what's interesting about these two is they've been doing it for a while and they've met each other that way they're a young couple i think she's 30 he's 35 and they're actually getting married next um next month in colorado even though we're in uh arizona and so they're they're the nicest couple and we love them because he's got a trigger (laughs) one of those barbecues um they're the nicest couple and they treat me and sherry like gold and we would go out to dinner with them and and they just are just, I can't say enough of how grateful we are to them as friends. And there's no age gap between us. They're uh, obviously younger than us, and they just don't care. Our dogs, <laughs> they got this cute little dog named Oscar. 
and Cinder and Oscar get along great. And then it looks so funny because Oscar is a tiny little guy. And uh, Cinder and them uh, both love each other. They just get along great. So anyway, uh, uh, the interview, I'm going to uh, start here in a minute. I just want to <clears throat> tell you it's about a half hour interview. It's not that long. And then there's more content afterwards. So but grab yourself a cup of coffee and chill out and listen to this great interview. These people are really nice. And uh, let me get it started here. I'm going to do a transition and then we'll start the interview. Hi, I'm Rob from RV Travel Buddy, and today we're with Chad and Valerie. And the reason I wanted to interview these folks, they're in the same park with me and Sherry, is they have a great story because they are temporary nurses. Is that the right terminology? Travel nurses. Tra travel nurses. Travel nurses. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, and they're a young couple, and so they uh, have a, a, a beautiful RV. And I'll tell you a little bit more about them in a minute. But first of all, I get asked, "How old are you two? I'm 30. And I'm 35. Oh, you're the old guy. Right? I, I get reminded of that. <laughs> right. thing yeah. And, and where are you two from? I'm from Missouri. Southeast Missouri. Mm, same here. Both uh, of you from Missouri, eh? And I know this. you haven't done this very long because I know this is a brand new RV, but how long have you been RVers? Well, since uh, March 28th, I guess, is when we uh, officially became RVers. Uh, March. So only yeah. a few months, huh? Yeah, yeah, only a few months. Yeah. So... Um, and I, I'm going to jump ahead a little bit just because um, both of you two are, I, I know, are getting married in uh, next month, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. that's really exciting. Yeah. And uh, you were telling me earlier that you guys had uh, both had houses mm -hmm. and you both had an apartment for a while, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so what made you go to an RV? Well, basically, well... Uh, I guess we kind of had discussed it um, a little while ago, and uh, the response that I got was, "I'm not living in a camper," <laughs> and uh, which I, I can understand that I can understand that. But um, then uh, kind of got to looking, and my parents uh, they uh, I guess full time in the winter in Texas, huh. and they actually pulled their RV here to visit with us, and when Valerie saw. Um, their camper um, she's like oh I didn't realize they made them like this yeah. I was used to the ones that you like take out to the lake and boondock in for the weekend and no slide outs and I know you know yeah. so it's just completely different and so at that point is when we started looking but the the kind of premise before that um, everywhere we go on travel assignments we have to find housing we can either let the company find housing for us or we can find our own and they pay us for it um, and uh, we've been traveling separately um, for about three years now. Um, we uh, uh, each find an apartment at different places, and so then we're out the expense of the apartment and yeah. the deposits, and then it's usually short-term leases, so we pay the short-term lease fees on top of that. And then, of course, we don't travel with furniture or anything, so then we rent furniture, and, and the cost just, you know, starts stacking up and stacking oh, I, up and stacking up. I know we, uh, Sherry's telling me a little bit, like, when you get an apartment and only do like a six month contract, it's like one third higher. Mm -hmm. um, it was twenty five percent more um, every month at the one we were at in yeah. Chandler. On top of on top on of top that. of renting mm -hmm. stuff mm -hmm. and all that. So wow. Yeah. yeah. And so um when you start looking at, you know, like two separate apartments and then all the fees and, and just the stacked cost and everything, uh, basically it was financially uh, beneficial to us uh, to do this. Plus, uh, one thing about like uh, living in an apartment, it's never yours. Yeah. And you can't really make it your own, especially when you're only there for three or six months, you know, just a short time period. And, um, you know, that's uh, that's one thing about having a house is it's yours and you can do with it what you want. So, um, kind of the, I guess one of the big desires about having the RV is that it's ours. Mm -hmm. And, um, we you know can make it our own we can put our own touches on it and everything and then we don't have to pack every every three or six months yeah, yeah. Um, because if you can imagine packing up your entire house uh, putting it into a vehicle um, every three months or every six months uh, it kind of gets a little old yeah now you know in uh, RVing a lot of people they're really into what they call work camping and stuff so your uh, 
traveling nurses, I said it right this time, uh -huh. um, probably intrigues a lot of folks. And so, what also I, I got the um, uh, definition that you guys are two different types of traveling nurses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You specialize in... Post-anesthesia. Okay, and your emergency? The emergency room, yeah. yeah. So, then the other problem you guys tr try to conquer is to get your contracts in the same location. Yeah. Right. So, is, is that right? Yeah, yeah. and it, it can be a chore sometimes. Um, the recruiter that we have is great. He really stays on top of it looking for jobs, and he'll email us and say, hey, there's two jobs, one for each of you in Tucson or, you know, wherever, and do you want me to submit you? And so he really, he goes out of his way to really try, and we're constantly looking on the Internet and seeing where jobs are and seeing, you know, which areas that we might want to go to to see if there's positions available. Yeah. God. He actually just emailed us today and said, hey, you guys, you should be uh, expecting a call from Albuquerque. Really? Uh, and, you and guys actually, want to go there, do uh, we, Yeah, we yeah. wouldn't mind going there. Um, yeah. We've both been there, actually, before we were actually dating. Um, we were there kind of separately on uh, contracts that overlapped. And um, Albuquerque's a fun town, so I really wouldn't mind going I back there. Mind going there. Yeah. yeah so I need, I need to, I, I haven't even told anybody about your RV, but actually I have. Because our show last week, I talked about your RV, because I told them how impressed I was. And then halfway through the show, I couldn't remember what kind of RV, and then the RV that was next to us pulled out. And then later in the show, <laughs> I said, oh, by the way, it's uh, such and such, and I've forgotten already. So please, would you tell us what kind of RV you have? Uh, so this is a 2016 uh, open range Roamer. Roamer, um, okay. and it's made by Highland RV. How many feet is it? Uh, it's 37 feet. It's 37. 37. It's 32. Ah, uh, 37, 37 feet. Lord. Uh, well, according to the paperwork, uh, the actual like box length of it is 37 feet, and then the tongue I think is another three feet. Wow. So it, overall, it's a long rig. Yeah, it um, is. It's, it's definitely the tail wagging the dog. So. Yeah. And you have how many slides? Three slides. Three slides. Mm -hmm. And this thing is humongous, and it's and um, I was telling everybody in the show last week that I was in this in here having dinner. And uh, by the way, dinner was great. <laughs> um, it is as roomy as a fifth wheel, and you guys have been over to me on uh, my place, and you mm -hmm. can, it probably feels pretty much the same to you. Mm -hmm. Just the furniture is kind of different, right? Yeah. But uh, it's amazing how roomy this is for a, um, a trailer, and, and I think you're saying the only drawback you have is a little less under storage. Um, the storage, right? Yeah, yeah. With this one, we're definitely we're uh, missing the basement storage that the yeah. fifth wheel has. But the, it's really, I think, more important to have good living. You know, filling like you got elbow room in this place. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's a beautiful rig. Thank you, yeah. thank you. And thank you bought you. it new, right? Right. Yeah. So you have, and you have a warranty on it. It's got a two-year warranty. Yeah. Two. Yeah. Wow. yeah. And That's so, good. Um, and I, I don't know. Um, I, I read that about two years ago. Um, the open range was bought out by Jayco, and mm -hmm. so I guess at that point they kind of adopted their two-year warranty that Jayco has. Gotcha. And what kind of rig are you using to pull it? Got a 2015 uh, F-150. Gotcha. Um, it's the Super Crew, and it has the 3.5 EcoBoost. Uh -huh. Now, before I go any farther, because there's something very, very cute at this table that we have to talk about. And it's not the fact that we gave them a stuffed cinder on the table over here, <laughs> but they have a cute little dog, and uh, his name is? Oscar. Oscar. And what kind of dog is he? Oscar's an 11-year-old miniature dachshund. <laughs> it, 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 and he happens to be Cinder's best friend. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, which is so funny, because it's like, they got this humongous dog, and, and <laughs> these two get along really good. It's amazing. Yeah. And uh, I think the biggest problem we have is to keep Cinder from stepping on him. <laughs> but uh, he's sitting at the table in your arms on his back like a little kind of babyish, but sitting up. Mm -hmm. And he's just being so cute. Anyway, so uh, Oscar, you said how, how old is he? 11. And how's he like RV life? He loves it so far. Um, he was living with my parents for a few months before... Um, we decided to bring him along. Just the apartment that I was in in Wisconsin didn't allow pets. Oh. So my parents kept him. And so then we brought him along in January. And he wasn't so sure about the apartment life. I mean, he he got adjusted. Yeah. Um, but we thought the RV would be a lot better for him, too. He would always know home and wouldn't have that 
anxiety of moving to a different place every three to six months. Yeah, I think it, when they have the RV, the anxiety really is gone. Yeah. The, only, the only shocker is when they come out the steps the first time and realize it's not the same place. Yeah. <laughs> right. But they don't seem to be that stressed about it. But, yeah. uh, but he's definitely an uh, older dog, but he's doing great. And uh, gets along with Cinder good. So yeah. um, if you hear a little bit of a chingle uh, in the background, that's that's Oscar. And by the way, we're in Arizona, and I want to remind our listeners that if you hear um, air conditioning in the background, we turn down one of our air conditioners just to keep the sound down. But uh, we appreciate everybody's patience that we do know that there's a background sound. So moving on, I wanted to... Um, well, you guys have a second car too, right? Yeah. And what do you do with the second car when you're traveling? Just follow him? Follow. Well, yeah. That's, yeah, that's what she's going to do. Yeah, when we actually, uh, when we came from Wisconsin to here, we trailered her car and I pulled it with the truck. Oh, and, yeah. yeah. And so that worked out nice. But now that we're getting the, uh, the rig on here, um, she's going to have to drive. So I know she's not too excited about that. But... <laughs> I know. Wow. So that, it's not as much fun. I, I know. know. I know. <laughs> it's, it's like, like uh, road tripping by yourself. Yeah, it's like, we're, it feels kind of funny that we have our fifth wheel here and have our second car, too. And mm -hmm. we know when we make the next move, we sure he, like, it's all bummed out because it's kind of fun. It just takes the adventure away. But yeah, the, the other thing is you guys don't have to do, like, as much. You're not really traveling to travel. You're traveling at, for your careers. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so you don't really have a lot of travel planning other than the fact of knowing where your next location is and what's the best way. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, there's... There's that. I mean, we do, um, like, try to, depending on where our assignment is and how much time we have to get there, um, depending on the assignment, sometimes we have, like, a week or two off between assignments, and so then we can kind of make a road trip out of it. Um, and so at that point, we do kind of get into a little bit of travel planning. It's like, okay, what can we see along the way? Where can we stop? What can we do? Um, and so that's kind of nice, but... Uh, we, we usually have a destination, you know, that we're going to and just find yeah. stuff along the way. And you guys are pretty avid, like, cyclists and, uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and do you guys jog? Yeah, I, yeah. I run. This one does, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> but uh, I, uh, I noticed while you guys have been here, you've actually gone on some good bike rides just in the areas mm -hmm. and stuff. So yeah. Uh, yeah, I imagine that's kind of a priority when you get to a new place is go look around with the bikes. Yep, <laughs> yep. Except exactly. Some, except Last time I talked to you about bicycles, you were falling off them. And, and <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, th there's the saying, you know, keep the rubber side down. <laughs> and um, yeah, I didn't do so well with that. Yeah, you um, fell, got, fell down the other day. You got pretty scraped up. I, I blame the Arizona roads and all the, all the gravel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, and this is kind of, well, it's not off of our being, but you guys possess something that I really want. And it's, and, and we've been over... And we've met, these guys are friends of ours also, and they have something I really, really want, but I haven't figured out the logistics yet, but you've got a Traeger barbecue. We do. And uh, so tell me, how did you get into this Traeger thing? Um, well, I can actually uh, pretty much blame my soon-to-be father-in-law. <laughs> uh, he, um, he's got a Traeger, and they've had it for several years, right? About five years now. Um, but... Val would always talk. I've, I've always had like smokers of different you know kinds, usually yeah. like a wood smoker and whatnot. Um, but with traveling, it's kind of hard. Yeah. And um, you know, Val's always talked about you know, oh, Dad, you know, you cook this on the Traeger, and it was so good, you know. And, and oh, we did these like mini apple pie things <laughs> that were just amazing and everything. And so every time she talks about it, you know, my mouth starts watering a little bit. Yeah. And um, so, you know, it, it's not really feasible to, to travel um, the way that we had been traveling um, with a larger grill or, yeah. you know, some of the smokers, you know, oh 300 God. pounds. I've got which, one, too. It's, yeah. it's in storage. I can't take it. Right. And um, actually, when we were in Wisconsin, we looked at, um, we were at the Wisconsin State Fair, and Traeger had a booth set up. And uh, they had this little bitty one uh, with like foldable legs and everything, and uh, it was called their tailgater. Yeah. And uh, but it's it, not that little bitty though. I mean, it, it's yeah, actually a good size. It's it's yeah. good size. Um, it's actually the smallest one that they make, but um, I mean, for our purposes, it's great. And I think at that time, like you had to buy the legs separately, wasn't yeah. it? And it was like another hundred bucks, and we were like, eh, no, we don't really need it. We yeah. didn't really have the room for it at that time. Um, so I think probably the first week. 
that we had the RV. I'm like, hey, babe, 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 we have we have room. We have room now. <laughs> and, go on, go um, ahead. Right. So uh, she was all about it, and so we started looking and and, and ended up buying one, and uh, probably the best investment that we've made since we bought the RV. Yes. Wouldn't you say? Yes. Well, I, yeah. I, as a neighbor, I think it's been a great investment. <laughs> <laughs> we, you guys cook. He's cooked pizzas in this thing. And then last week, you guys, was that a pulled pork? Yeah, pork yeah, shoulder. Pork shoulder. Pork, pork, yeah. Oh, my God. So he makes this gigantic pork shoulder, and he's got way too much food, which was really just a sad thing that he had to give us something to take. <laughs> so that's what I had for lunch every day. And, you know, of course, Sherry's gone, so Sherry's like, did you eat all that? It's like, yeah. <laughs> it was really good. So, yeah, we really like him as a neighbor. <laughs> so when he moves out, maybe I'll buy a train. There you go. There you go. <laughs> so now that you've been RVing, now you haven't traveled that much yet, but what has been some of the most interesting problems that you had to sort out or logistics? Um, most interesting problems, well, I'd say the first problem that we had was uh, the the unpredictable wind here yeah. and our awning oh um, that's right yeah uh yeah that was uh just kind of a, a gust out of nowhere and uh took care of the awning for us and everybody says you know that uh when the first thing breaks that's kind of the okay well you're you're an rv you're now yeah yeah you're yeah it seems like that was our first thing too was uh, was awnings yeah um but then uh while we were waiting we actually had to uh, a few things with the RV that um, they found on our walkthrough that I had to take it back to the dealership uh, and have it fixed. And when I pulled back up here and, and parked it um, that evening, uh, trying to get it cooled back down, uh, we noticed that our main AC was not cooling. Which is not good here in Arizona. Yeah. Uh, luckily, it hadn't hit the uh, like the 115, 120 you know, mark yet. But uh, it was still um, a big metal tube sitting on an asphalt, you know, oh, in, know. in the Arizona sun. Um, they got that fixed pretty fast for you, though. They yeah, did. Yeah. Actually, uh, one of the uh, one of the, my co-workers, um, her husband, uh, does RV repair. And uh, I was fortunate enough. She gave me his number, and I called him, and he came right out uh, that day and looked at it. Mm -hmm. And uh, when he pulls off the cover and says... He's like, oh, shut it down. He's like, we've got catastrophe. And um, there was apparently compressor oil all over the inside of the casing. And wow. um, so uh, that was a big ordeal. But he, he ordered one immediately. They shipped it right out. And, it was um, fixed by Wednesday. Yeah, right? th yeah, that was on like, well, he ordered it Monday and had it yeah. fixed on Wednesday. Yeah. Uh, you know, my observation that's kind of interesting here is most of the people that we interview on our show are people that kind of plan to be RVers and they're kind of like woohoo and wave a flag kind of thing and you guys I know you can feel it in the air, uh, interviews an RV has just been a tool to you mm -hmm. not like a fixation right I use that so it's really interesting because all the other people I interviewed they're either got shows and stuff like that so they're waving the big RV flag and you guys are just and we talk about this a lot in the show is you're using an RV as a resource to mm -hmm. fit with your careers, where a lot of people get an RV and try to find a career to fit RVing. Right. So you guys are, it's kind of interesting. It's like the first time I've had an interview like this, um, I was like, I can feel a, a different kind of um, motivation. And it's, yeah. <laughs> it's even throwing me off in my questions a little <laughs> bit. Because it's like, I, these are like, I have the, all these questions that these big enthusiasts would. Oh yeah, I got to tell you about thousand trails and all these things to pass on, and 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 uh, what we've been trying. To, and you guys are like the perfect couple because you are amongst so many that don't get a voice, but you're amongst the majority of people using an RV as a tool or a resource to accomplish their goals. And so <laughs> kind of, you guys might be different. Like uh, about a year from now, you probably have your own channel. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, but it's the kind army of, travel nursing. Right? Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Yeah. But uh, the, the interesting part is your careers. Is I think people with uh, so many people are striving so hard to find a career like yours to live this lifestyle, and um, and you're kind of discovered getting away from the mortgage, getting away from the the rentals and the leases is mm -hmm. quite a 
less less stress. Do mm-hmm. you feel the less stress at least? Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 A little bit more freedom is really the word people use with the RV, but. Um, it's just funny that kind of you guys are like, what? <laughs> What's the big deal? It's just an RV. <laughs> so anyway, it's really interesting. Um, so I'm going to kind of go straight to some of my other questions. Um, um, do you guys actually ever so far missed a house or having an apartment? Any little things that kind of stand out? I guess some of the little things that I miss is I like to take really long showers yeah. And to have unlimited hot water and mm-hmm. as much water pressure as I need. And I feel like sometimes I'm like, okay, well, I better hurry up because I don't know how much longer I'm going to have hot water. Or, oh, crap, we didn't dump the water, the gray tank. My, you know, hey, can you oh, go dear. through that real quick? Yeah, you got water is backing inch, up. Yeah, you got an inch of water in the yeah. bottom of the shower. Yeah. So I, I sometimes <laughs> miss that, like just being able to, you know, t- really take my time in the shower and... How about uh, cooking or anything like that? Is that no? We cook everything on the trigger. <laughs> <laughs> I'm loving that. He's yeah. in charge. Yeah, yeah. And you guys, oh, by the way, in this RV, you guys have a regular refrigerator. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, we have residential, residential. refrigerator. Yeah, so uh, um, which is typically what you would see in a Class A. Mm-hmm. You don't really see that much even in fifth wheels, but they're starting to put them in fifth wheels too. But that was a that was a must. Whenever whenever Valerie uh, looked at the first one and was like, "We can get a residential refrigerator," that went on the must-haves list when we were looking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what's kind of interesting is like I, I think as time goes on for you guys to move out, we'll probably be assisting that because you guys have not really had the opportunity to not have good power or not have. Uh, um, your batteries being very important to you, or television, or mm-hmm. internet and stuff like that. So the one thing is, we're, we're as friends, we're really hoping to help them out. Is when they start moving on to, because we're in a park that has everything we want, including internet, really good internet. Yeah. yeah. And so we're very fortunate. And but you guys haven't seen anything other than that. Right. right. So that's the other thing that's kind of interesting about this interview is you haven't seen some of the things that are going to happen to you. <laughs> right. <laughs> so it's really been nice that we can be helpful to them. As long as they keep giving us food from the Traeger, <laughs> we will help you. To- <laughs> right. <laughs> totally. So, yeah, that's a good thing. So um, other than the fact that you just, I mean, you may, this may be all what you're doing right now, but do you have any kind of future plans that, um, that include the RV with it to do something unique or fun or, or over the top? Um. No, we're planning on uh, just continuing travel nursing uh, for a little while longer. Um, not really anything set in stone as far as, uh, you know, time frame. You're not, not going to uh, drive this down to Brazil or something? Or no. You know, Alaska? You know, <laughs> um, Alaska might be a possibility, but um, I think this one might get uh, beat up on the way up there. Um, I think it'd be better than a fifth wheel. Yeah. yeah Maybe, it, I think. Who knows? Um, but uh, maybe that might be kind of our, our last destination. We could take uh, take an Alaska trip or something. Uh, I think I think right now our biggest uh, our biggest plans and our biggest milestone is uh, that we're getting married. Getting here. married. Yeah. yeah. Married, yep. Forty four days. Yeah. <laughs> um, you kind of feel the tension in the air about the <laughs> the plans. It's getting closer and closer. Mm-hmm. It's like yeah. And I, that's what I actually made uh, made reservations because we're we're pulling the RV close to where we're getting married and um we're actually getting married up in a, a very small very very small town in colorado and um it's in the middle of the mountains in the middle of nowhere and there's essentially nothing there and so you, you know we're, we're looking online and it's like okay there is an rv park there and i'm like oh, okay i need to need to call and make reservations yeah. and so i actually sent in a reservation request last night and I'm like, yeah, you know, I want, I, I'd prefer like a site by the creek and, you know, need 50 amp service, yada, 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 and everything. I get an email back this morning and they're like, we have one site and it's 30 amp. Do you want it? Ooh. And I'm like, <laughs> well, well yeah. Yeah, 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 we kind of need it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was thinking this is summertime. That might be a tough, yeah. you know, tough to get a spot. Yeah, it's like yeah. peak season. It's peak there. season, yeah. you know. Uh, which you know, I said, well, thirty amp will be okay. I said because really we only need one air conditioner. I'm sure there because it's seven thousand, yeah. seven thousand five hundred feet, seven thousand feet elevation, and so hoping yeah. that'll. Uh, yeah, be a so cooler. you're not going to need so much power. Yeah. yeah. So I bet you'll be fine. So, all right. So I got to get into the next question, that, and it might be a little early to ask this question, but. 
Um, and you actually pointed out a few things. This is your very first RV. Mm -hmm. So you really didn't know what you would want in an RV until you actually got one, which everybody has to go through that. I think your first choice has been awesome. <laughs> but Good. I'm going to ask the question, what would you have done different? Um, well, like, I, I don't know um, really anything different. Uh, I just bought my truck, and so we were kind of limited uh, because I bought my truck last August, and um, of course it was brand new. And um, with Ford, I got zero percent financing for seventy-two months, That's and I, I, I'm not giving that up. No. Um, if I had known a year ago, you know, I probably would have bought um, you know three-quarter ton or a one-ton um, truck, and then we wouldn't have been limited to the type of trailer or the size of trailer you know that we could buy. Um, and so that was kind of part of the difficulty in finding what we wanted yes. um, because he said Valerie had a, had a checklist well it's got to have this it's got to have this it's got to <laughs> have course. this and you know we would, we would look at a you know an RV like especially at the fifth wheels and um, you know we'd, we'd step out of one and Val would be like I love that one and I'd go around to the tag and I'd be like oh uh, yeah 14.4 <laughs> gross vehicle weight nope <laughs> we can't love it that much not, not happening yeah. you know well, you guys have done well for what you can get Oh yeah. my gosh! I yeah, mean, it, people. It, I wish people could see this thing. I think out of everything that we've we we looked at and we looked at, I think um, every RV in the Phoenix metro area, um, pretty <laughs> much. Um, and that's a lot. Yeah. Um, there there was one day I'd worked a night shift, and um, it was actually the day that we found this camper. I I'd, I'd worked a night shift, got off in the morning, we drove to Avondale, and started you know on the west side of Phoenix, and um, kind of made our way back to Mesa, and. Um, it was four o'clock in the afternoon at this point after a 12 hour night shift and then all day looking at RVs and that was when we found this camper and um, you know we start doing negotiations and everything and finally I had to say I can't anymore I'm like I'm, I'm way too tired uh, I'm like you know I'm, I'm not in the mind frame to you know discuss anything further and and we left and we went back about a week later didn't we mm -hmm. um, but yeah um, I, I think that um, we, we really we found a good camper uh, I found a good a good rig um, has everything on your checklist mm -hmm. It does. Uh, it's a nice rig. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to give you this final. Now, um, you're, I'm not sure how your message will be, but because you're not avid RVers, but you're a young couple with great. Um, uh, I keep wanting to say temporary, but it's, what, what do you guys call yourselves? Travel nursing. Travel nur nurses. nursing. Yeah. Um, anyway, I'm going to give you a chance to say um, if you had a message to give out to anybody that. In, that are thinking about using RV or maybe have careers similar to yours or anything, what kind of message would you pass on to them if you could? <laughs> um, I mean, if you're even thinking about it, uh, go for it. Um, I think it's probably been one of the best decisions that we've made. Mm -hmm. um, and just the, um, not necessarily the lifestyle, but the community. Yeah, um, the community is awesome. The community yeah, is awesome because, is. you know, um, you know, I lived in Baltimore um, for nine months. It was my very first travel assignment. Didn't know anybody, you know, moved there cold. Um, I didn't know one person in my apartment building after nine months, you know, and it's just because people are like, not necessarily reclusive, but I guess in the it's society that busy. we live in today, well, everybody's busy and people work varying schedules, you know, um, when you're home, it's kind of like your time, you know, and, yeah. and people don't really get out. But, um, like, it, it, it is a certain breed of people that are, you know, RVers, um, and um, the other thing is, uh, I think we talked about this the other day, it kind of forces you to get outside. Yeah. And so everybody's kind of outside, and, you know, you're meeting everybody. Like, since we've, uh, since we moved here, we've met more people. Um, yeah. So than, yeah. Yeah. I agree. And, yeah. You know, I mean, feeding it's the whole neighborhood. <laughs> feed, you, know, you know, what's so funny is like Sherry and I, and we were telling you that we don't, you know, we're kind of doing the nine to five for five years, didn't know anybody. And so we always laugh is like when somebody comes over and knocks on the door, that it happens so rare in the last five years. 
that you almost want to go, what is that? <laughs> What's that knocking sound? But right. now we just go, boy, I hope they're inviting us over for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yes, but, uh, so, yeah, it's just, unusual. I just it's funny, but it, it, that really goes to our head, like, wow, someone's knocking at our door. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, just want to either visit or have a favor or, so, or somebody's right. leaving for the weekend. Right. And we all help each other, and it's like, mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I'm just not used to that. It's been right. So, yeah, yeah. so well, you even really like, nailed it. You know, at the, at the apartment, using the, the grill for an example, um, you know, there was community grills, and so there were, you know, we would grill food all the time and you know people would just walk by and not say anything not like oh hey what you cooking you know or anything like that you know people just walk by don't even really say hi or anything um but like the, the first day that we had the traeger i was sitting outside cooking a couple racks of ribs and um you know everybody that walked by you know would say something you know oh how do you like the traeger or man that smells great you know what time's dinner you know and everything <laughs> yeah. that's usually me <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what time should we be over right <laughs> but yeah it's just it's just a totally different i guess mentality a totally different personality yeah you know yeah. Uh, and so we uh we absolutely love it so far mm-hmm. yeah well it was kind of funny because you know um, our listeners get to see our videos too so mm-hmm. it was kind of good that um was it the oh the first time we did dinner with you guys with the pizzas mm-hmm. was w- just after we did our first video about making pita coladas that's right so it was yeah. like all right perfect trade we'll go over for pizza we'll give them pina coladas what a great dinner that was that was yes, great it was. the yeah. pina coladas were amazing <laughs> yes they were they good were delicious <laughs> good so anyway, i i uh, i i um i'm so tickled to have you guys on the show um it's uh, i think it's really neat to have people that aren't just so trying to sell the RV concept as it is saying that the RV concept works for them in their careers and that's the cool part about it so mm-hmm. I want to thank you guys for being on the show you and uh, make sure uh, you'll be on uh, the show on Monday so you'll be able to hear yourselves oh. <laughs> okay. anyway and uh, I, um, I'm going to ask you guys uh, if you don't mind we'll get a picture of you two in front of your RV so people can see what your RV looks like from the outside yeah, sure. And so if they're shopping for one like it um, I'm telling you, these guys have got a great, uh, great trailer RV, and uh, if you don't want to pull a fifth wheel, this is probably the best living RV uh, trailer I've ever seen. So, anyway, so I want to thank you for being on the show, and we'll talk to everybody else later. Thank you. Take care. All right. Bye. 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 What an awesome interview that was with Valerie and Chad. Those two are one of the nicest couples I've ever met, and they're getting married in about 44 days, 45 days or so, and we wish them the best. Uh, They're just good, giving people, and obviously with the careers they have being travel nurses, they're just good people. And they see, uh, (laughs) I asked them about their careers, and we've talked, and they see some ugly stuff, and but they're they're present with people that are in need at the time, and it can be a little stressful. But uh, they see some ugly stuff, but they're also there for comfort. Anyway, great people. They have a really wonderful RV, and so uh, uh, hopefully you'll take a look at the picture that we have for this banner for this show. And you'll be able to see the rig. And if you have more questions or uh, want more information about that RV, uh, just shoot us a note in the comments. And I'll see if I can't get more data for you. But anyway, they are great people. But the point is I wanted to kind of bring up with it. Their interview really pointed out how people use RV or RVs as a, uh, a resource. And, and they're the majority. Uh, so... I keep pointing out to people that uh, when we're in RV parks, like I said, if there's 1%, 2% of people that actually do blogs or videos and stuff like me and Sherry, it's amazing. But, you know, there's happy stories and even sad stories, but how the RV be- becomes a, a, a practical resource for living nowadays. Some people, maybe they retired and they just, you know, they're, didn't have a pension all they have is their social security uh, but they still want to live independently and and to make the numbers work an rv works well for just living in not necessarily traveling Uh, there's folks that uh, we have a gal next to us here that has health issues 
and I believe she's single, and uh, she's actually been here for years, and uh, has a great looking class A, but I don't think it's moved for a long, long time. But it works good because she's also wheelchair bound, can walk a little, health issues, keeps her dog, they're very understanding here at this RV park for them, and a real nice lady. And uh, it just goes on and on how people are using an RV as a resource or an alternative because, you know, assisted living, uh, some careers, some people are uh, contract workers. Uh, I told you about another neighbor I have here who's actually down here for the Chrysler Company uh, Corporation to uh, for kind of training ground. And so their main home is up in Utah. And they have a house and a whole works while they're using an RV down here. Why he'll be here for quite a long time, actually, and flies home when he can. And has a beautiful little uh, daughter and a son. And we got to meet the whole family the other day. But once again, the RV is being used as a tool. So when I talk to him about all these things we talk about, where are you going to go next? What's your plans? Uh, how do you do your navigation? They look at us like, what are you talking about? <laughs> It's like, you mean people, you know, we use our RV as a tool. So we're not all excited about the fact that it's the RV world as they are. This is just, um, it's like bowling and this is my bowling ball. Uh, anyway, so it's kind of a shocker for all of us that are RV enthusiasts uh, to meet all this practicality. So world's changing and I, and I, I believe this is really where it fits in with, you see a lot of people going into the um, tiny homes or, or living a minimal life. Once again, I think some people are doing it out of practicality. Sometimes it's spiritual too. Also of a fact of, I don't need so much stuff. Just give me what I need to live comfortable and I don't need to hoard stuff. And so um, the, the minimus, minimalist kind of living also kind of fits in all this too and they don't look at this as a big thrill of being an RV or a tiny house as it is this is a practical a very practical way of living and you know I'm sure you're, you probably notice it is especially at my you know me and Sherry we look at like oh um, yeah you know, we looked at houses for a while and they're humongous I'm like why do I need 28,000 um, uh, square feet or why do I even need 17 and Lord knows if you can even find like a 1200 foot uh, square foot rambler anymore and uh, of course you know when you get live uh, getting old <laughs> older like us you think about buying houses that are simple to live in because when you get into your real senior uh, years steps and, and stairs can be a real issue and so finding Houses like that in, in the United States anymore seems like, you know, we're just, I don't know, we're greedy. <laughs> so um, I think that's why so many people are saying, hey, enough, enough is enough. I don't need this. Just give me something comfortable to live in. And, and let, um, what's around me is more important than where I live. Other, I just, I need to stay warm. I need to be able to cook in a nice place to sleep. And, uh, um, and the whole world is my plate to play in. So anyway, um, it was very refreshing. I really hope you enjoyed that interview. So, of course, this is the part where I remind everybody that we'd like to hear from you. Um, we really appreciate the folks that have been sharing our shows, our videos, and our radio. Uh, also, we remind you about the outdoor travel radio. And... Uh, what, why I keep bringing that up is these shows are actually posted on that show too and they run um, I think three times a day different times in the day that we play some of the most current shows from this RV Talk Radio and so uh, if you've missed episodes in the past or um, sometimes it's nice to have some of our older uh, they're not that old a couple of weeks old uh, shows or episodes are kind of fun to listen to out of the blue and we're trying to run them at um, times that are convenient to hear them uh, so anyways so we appreciate that we also want to make sure that we 
always invite you guys to communicate with us, whether you want to uh, go to directly to the website at RV Talk Radio, go to the contact page. You can go to the Facebook pages, hit the little button at the top where it says messages. And those actually, when you use that, we actually get a little bleep on our cell phone. And in some cases, we can answer you quite quickly on, on questions. Anyway, we do. Um, we uh, we always want to hear what we're doing right, and, we, and if we are doing something that you'd like changed or irritating or something like that, we ask that you do that privately or do it very professionally. And all of you guys have, and it's been wonderful. We have really good feedback, and uh, I can't thank you enough for that. Constructive feedback is uh, a good thing, uh, but also knowing what we're doing right so we don't eliminate it because sometimes. You ever been around people where things are all good and they never really tell you? And so when you stop doing it, you don't realize you've stopped doing a really good thing. So same thing with these shows is if there's something that we're checking along, like I don't hear a whole lot about the interviews we do. Uh, if you like those interviews, uh, try not to do too many of them. We've kind of shortened them up so they don't get so long. Um, if that's a thumbs up kind of thing, tell us that you like it. We appreciate that. So, it's getting about that time. I find it truly amazing how fast this goes. And I, uh, I, I hope you folks feel the same way when you're listening to our show. That you go, wow, that went quick. And, uh, you know, like I said, we always try to keep the show under an hour. And uh, so, the 45 minutes to 55 minute target. <laughs> it's like, wow, it's here already. And it's like, we'd like to visit and be friends with you and, and chat with you whenever we can. So this is our time to do so. Uh, I do want to thank everybody for listening. Uh, we want to make sure that we remind everybody to please share our videos, share our shows. Um, try out our new radio station. We got a link down below about it. And uh, hopefully, I'm kind of hoping that we can catch up with that couple again in um, six months to a year and find out what they've learned about RVing that uh, might have might change since they just started. So they were really good people and uh, it's so nice. I think the important thing that we all learned as they told you is RV people are very special people. You're friendly, good people. And I think it's the fact of um, you're forced to go outside a little bit because that's, you need to get out of these little homes sometimes to stretch a little and, and, you'll find that all of us are helpful to each other in one way or another. Everybody has different kinds of talents. So I've truly been inspired by those two uh, and inspired by other people I meet. And I get to interview these people and I get to share them with you. And I hope we inspire you too, that if you're already in our veer, uh, that you feel that much more comfortable with yourself about it and, 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 and get some ideas. If you're thinking about being an RVer, uh, one thing I can tell you, a uh, whole thing, it doesn't matter what size, whether it's new, old, used, whatever kind of RV, it's not that. It's the people. So, I'm Rob Scribner from RV Talk Radio. Thank you so much for listening. We'll talk to you folks next Monday. Bye now and be safe. Thank you for watching our videos. Please take the time to subscribe and consider being a Patreon supporter. There is many more adventures and some big surprises coming in the future with your help. Thanks again.